Approach to a patient with hematuria. Let's begin our approach using P3 maftosa, 3 P's, present complaint, past complaints, personal history. Let's start with present complaints. Do you mind if I ask you what has brought you into hospital? Here, can you please tell me more about it? Let's ask for further details using mnemonics ODPARA. Onset. How did it start? What were you doing when it started? Did it come gradually or all at once? Is it the first time, or do you have similar complaints in the past, as well? Duration. For how long did it last? Progression. Do you have similar complaints in the past? If there is a history of a similar episode in the past, assess how frequently it is happening. Aggravating factor. Is there anything that makes it worse? Recent history of trauma or vigorous exercise may be an essential clue. Relieving factor. Have you noticed what makes it better? Associated symptoms. Ask about systemic symptoms like fever and rigors. It can provide a clue for pyelonephritis and vasculitis. Next, ask about weight loss and anorexia for any possible malignancy or vasculitis. Moreover, any recent trauma, burns, exercise, falls, seizures, and statins are suggestive of rhabdomyolysis. Remember, activities like long-distance running, marching, and boxing can cause exorcise-induced hematuria. At this point, ask about the ABCDO for hematuria. A. Amount. Have you noticed any change in the volume of urine? Is it more than usual or less? B. Blood. Have you noticed any blood or clots in urine? What were the size and shape? Clots originating from the bladder are rounded in shape, while elongated clots arise from the upper urinary tract. Moreover, ask, have you noticed any blood during the stream? When was it present? At the beginning, throughout, or at the end of the stream? Blood at the beginning of the urinary stream originates from the urethra and prostate. Blood seen throughout maturation arise from the bladder, ureter, and kidneys, whereas bleeding at the end of the stream indicates the bladder base and prostate as the source. C. Color. What is color of urine? It can be bright red, pink, or brown. Have you noticed any change in the color of your waterworks? C. Consistency. Have you noticed any change in consistency of urine? Is it becoming thicker? Was there any pus in urination? Frothy urine reveals the appearance of proteinuria. C. Content. Ask about. Have you passed stones in the past? D. Duration. How long have you noticed to be present? O. Odor. Do you feel it's getting more foul-smelling? Ask about the urinary symptoms. How frequently do you have to pass urine? Do you have trouble holding urination until you get to the toilet? Do you have to wake up at night to go to the toilet? Do you feel fullness even after passing urine? How is your flow of urine? Is it continuous? Or is there any dribbling after urination? Do you have to strain during urination? Do you have to wait before starting urination? Do you have to rush to the toilet for urination? Let's ask specific questions to establish a definitive diagnosis and rule out the possible causes that may result in hematuria. IgA nephropathy. Ask about any recent illness within a week along with hematuria. It will provide an important clue. Pulmonary renal syndromes. Hemoptysis and hematuria will be an essential feature of pulmonary renal syndromes. Wegener's granulomatosis. It has multi-system involvement. Prominent features include cough, rhinorrhea, wheeze, and epistaxis. Non-blanching purpuric rashes, arthralgia, and myalgia also support this diagnosis. Systemic lupus erythematosus, the presence of malar rash, dyspnea, pleuritic chest pain, pleural effusions, arthralgia, and myalgia may occur in SLE. Systemic sclerosis, the presence of Raynaud's phenomenon, painful and cold fingers along with tight skin, is suggestive of systemic sclerosis. Bleeding disorder, ask for easy bruising and mucosal bleeding. Past complaints, similar complaints. Has anything like this has happened to you? For how long? What did you take for it? Is it well controlled? Are you taking any medication? Anticoagulants and cyclophosphamide can cause hematuria. Do you have any long-time medical condition? If yes, then ask how long? Is it well controlled? Ask about hospitalization, saying, have you ever been hospitalized? If the patient says yes, then ask for what purpose? For example, for any procedure like a biopsy. Next step is personal complaints. I'm going to ask you a few personal questions, and whatever you say will be confidential. Smoking. Do you smoke? 
If say yes, then ask, how many cigarettes do you smoke a day? For how long have you been smoking? Tell me about your sleep. Do you drink alcohol? Proceed by asking what do you prefer to drink? How much? For how long have you been drinking like this? How is your appetite? Recreational drugs. By any chance, do you take recreation drugs? If the patient says yes, then proceed by asking, sorry to ask you, but what do you do? How do you take it? If injecting, ask, by any chance do you use a new needle all the time? For how long you are doing this? Do you use any other recreational drugs? Weigh change. Have you been weighing on the higher side? If yes, ask about bowel habits. How often do you open your bowels? Have you noticed any change? Sexual history. If the patient is sexually active, then ask, sorry to ask you this but are you in a stable relationship? For how long? Are you on any contraception? Did you travel abroad before your symptoms? If the patient is a female, ask about 4P, period, LMP. When were your last periods? If more than 4 weeks, then she might be pregnant. How many days did they last? Are they irregular? Do you get pain? Any abnormal bleeding? Are you on pills? Pregnancy. If she is not sexually active, so she is not pregnant, then ask, have you ever been pregnant? Duration of pregnancy? Mode of delivery? How many children do you have? Any miscarriage or abortion? Any complications before, during, or after pregnancy? Pap smear? When did you have your last pap smear? What was the report? Was it normal? If it is abnormal, have you booked an appointment with GP? Allergy? Are you allergic to any particular substance or medication? Family history? For carcinoma history in a family is essential, ask, I am very sorry to ask, but anyone in your family is diagnosed with a sinister disease, cancer. Moreover, ask about adult polycystic kidney disease, Alport syndrome, and bleeding disorder. Travel history. Have you recently traveled abroad? Inquire about fresh water swimming in areas with schistosomiasis, for example, Lake Malawi. Occupation history. What do you do for a living? Ask about the nature of the work, primarily if he works in the dye, rubber and dry cleaning industry whether he has had to take time off from work due to his symptoms, social history, where do you live, whom do you live with, do you drive, inquire about the functional status of the patient, particularly the impact on the activities of daily living, anything else you want to tell me, now, in the end, take your time for an impression, then, turn to the examiner and say based upon my history, my most probable diagnosis is this, my differentials are this, this and that, and I should have ruled out this and that. Thank you for watching. Stay connected and subscribe to this channel for more interesting medical professional videos. And, good luck with your exam.